Welcome back to Drawn to Comics. We're at the Glendale Chocolate Affair with Phil Ortiz, who's been our guest today at Drawn to Comics. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in. How, oh, my pleasure. How have you enjoyed the show so far? I, uh, I'm i really fascinated with what's going on here uh, outside where the candy fa festival is going on and inside here at the comic book store. So. Very cool. Well, Phil Ortiz has been a five-time Emmy Award winner, worked on Simpsons, helped create the Muppet Babies cartoon, Smurfs, He-Man, many, many other cartoons. But tell me a little about the cartooning process. I mean, how does that all get started and how much time people have from start to finish to get a cartoon done? Well, it's changed uh, since I started back in 1978 at Hanna-Barbera, the process uh, because of the computers. So, um, uh, but it usually starts out, and it still does start out with a script. It's the first step of doing an animated cartoon. And, uh, and then the scripts go to the uh, uh, storyboard people, and then they make, create storyboards from the scripts, which they eventually send to the uh, layout people, who do uh, the, uh, the scenes in the, uh, in the episodes that are illustrated in the storyboard. Uh, that means character animation uh, mixed with uh, the background. Okay. And um, so it's an assembly line. It goes down to uh, the animators and then to the camera people and the checkers and uh, all the way to uh, you know the final uh, the, uh, the final uh, putting together uh, in, in the can they call it uh, uh, final checking. So final checking. Yes. yes. Very cool. How much time frame do you think that usually takes to be done? Oof. Um, when I was at Hanna-Barbera? Okay, well, from start to finish, an average is about five to six months for one episode. But what they do to uh, keep up with their deadlines is they have like two or three crews working on the same working project. on different shows okay. or the same show. For instance, if they work on one particular show and there are 22 episodes per season, then uh, if there are three units, then they do every third episode. So. It's quite, quite an affair to get just one cartoon out. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's a long process. Now, I have uh, been told that you were actually in a Simpsons cartoon yourself. Yeah, I was. They can you, can you, I pretty much know what I understand. It's a... Uh, Without me knowing it, they did uh, Tell us a, a model it. sheet. They did a model sheet of me. I uh, went back to uh, the, the studio way back. Uh, it was during the third season. And I had lunch with some of the guys that uh, were still working there at on The Simpsons because I had just left after the second season to go to Disney Publishing. Okay. And um, they um, held up a piece of paper with a drawing of me, and they said, "Phil, hey, you know, this is we're putting you in one of the shows, uh, one of the episodes." I think this is it right here. What you're telling me is like yeah. what you look like on screen. This is if you can zoom in on that. This is what it what I look like. I'm dead center here in the middle. I had long hair. I used to wear black shirts. And, uh, a bit of a rebel back then. But, uh, a little bit of Bart Simpson in you? Yeah, a little bit of Bart. And uh, so, you know, they had stamped on the model sheet. A model sheet is uh, a drawing of a character and all artists must follow that that drawing to the T to keep it on model. So um, they had stamped a approved on it mean that which means they're uh, they have the green light to go ahead and use that model all the animators and, and artists so you've worked in the 70s 80s 90s the 21st century now what's your favorite era of cartoons um my favorite era uh, I love the 60s I didn't start until 78 but I wish I was working during the 60s because uh, they came out with a lot of really uh, original ideas for cartoons, what was especially Hanna Barbera. Yes, <laughs> because they they dominated the the uh, limited animation scene back then. Do you have a favorite that was your favorite cartoon from that era? Well, I have maybe two. Uh, 
only because I, I am a collector of these old movies. Uh, Hanna-Barbera did uh, an animated series of Laurel and Hardy and Abbott and Costello. Nice. Yes. And uh, that was around the mid-60s. I actually remember so, those too, seeing those uh, replayed. And they actually used, uh, Bud Abbott was still around, so they used his voice, his own voice, to, uh, to do Abbott. And uh, let's see, the guy was named Stan Irwin. He did the voice of Luke Costello. Oh, wow. That's yeah, and he sounded really much like Luke. And for Lauren Hardy, they used Larry Harmon as Stan Laurel. Larry Harmon supposedly created uh, Bozo the Clown. Nice. And uh, I don't know who did Oliver Hardy. I'm not sure, but uh, I was thrilled to see that somebody had put, made a cartoon series of these, of these uh, uh, comedians. Because they were from a totally different generation before that, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 40s, uh -huh. 50s. They go back to the 30s. Yeah, 30s. The 20s. Wow. Uh, silence. Uh, Lauren Hardy does. Uh, Abner Costello came around the 40s. It was, it was cool to see them introduced to a whole new generation through that. Absolutely. But Hanna-Barbera has done uh, a lot of, they have done a lot of cartoon shows based after, uh, you know, different personalities and comedians. Uh, when I was there, uh, they had. I was working on shows like the Dukes of Hazard. They wow. did a Dukes of Hazard show, and um, was Gilligan's Planet? The Gilligan's kind of Planet Barbera? was I know it sounds filmation. kind of random left field there. But no, Gilligan's filmation. Gilligan's Planet was filmation. Okay, so I remember that too. And they, of like TV shows made into cartoons. They, they did a lot of them. They did Star Trek. Yes. Uh, as a as an animated show, and they did. Uh, uh, what is it, the uh, Brady Bunch, yes. and a lot of other uh, popular TV shows. But I guess to say to work. We're at Drama Comics right now with Phil Ortiz. If you want to say, if people want to find more information about Phil Ortiz and just follow you on the internet or see blogs from you or anything we can do to see what's going on with you coming up down the road, what's the best way for people to find that out? Well, I am on, I'm on Google, so you can Google just Phil Ortiz on there. You can see uh, what I've been doing at conventions, comic book conventions. I just want to say it's been an honor Sorry. being My, here with you today. I, I really appreciate it very much. And, uh, you know. and we look forward to having you back at Drawn to Comics. That's what I was going to say. I, I'd love to come back. So. Comic Fan Network, it's been a pleasure and an honor being able to sit here with Phil Ortiz, a piece of cartoon animation history. We hope you enjoyed this on Comic Fan Network. I'm Ken Brown. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>